It's 2001. You want to play a new Jurassic Park game, but none have come out since Jurassic Park 3 Danger Zone. What games or levels of games do you play? Do you play this again, or this, or this, or go in that flipping raft again? Do you go back into the volcano? Or do you want to play... Well, we don't talk about this game. Today, I will be reviewing four games. Completely out of order, but this is Jurassic Park 3 Island Attack. Let's get straight into it. Also, take into account, this was for the Game Boy Advance, so the graphics are gonna go down a generation Holy or two. crap, that just comes straight out of nowhere, it's almost like- <laughs> Blah 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 blah, credits happen, and then, after a long long time- Hmm, that seems familiar. Stage 1 is called the landing point, and in the landing point, you start out by getting chased by a velociraptor that looks exactly like an atrociraptor. I mean seriously, look at these animations. They look exactly like the ones from Jurassic World Evolution 2, and also on top of that, the skin looks like the Gambia River Basin Rana skin, so what the heck. Also, before I get into the rest of my review, make sure to like and subscribe. Anyways, you escape your first Velociraptor, and then you see a Spinosaurus, which lets out the most hilarious roar literally ever. And I think it's gonna speak for itself. And this thing's Spinosaurus, it's like one of the few animals in the franchise famous for killing a T-Rex, and... What do you give it? The smallest roar ever known. Later in the level, you are greeted by a warehouse with a velociraptor. And you have a gun that you found in another ship. So you absolutely destroy that raptor. Or you should have. But guess what? Like five hits won't kill a flipping raptor. Old facility that I should probably not be in. Oh look, it's a gun! So eventually you find this warehouse and the T-Rex destroys a wall on it. And this game is kind of weird in that, like, if you shoot the dinosaur, okay. But apparently you need to shoot the box to get the dinosaur to get hurt, which is kind of odd. But when you eventually get that right at the right second, you get to finish the level. So that's good. Stage 2 is called the Laboratory, and you are greeted by a sleeping Velociraptor, and you have to take care of him by shooting a box. After that, you find a motorcycle, but guess what? You need to go find the keys. So, you go looking for him, and then guess what? A whole pack of raptors is hunting you now. So you go inside this building, and yay, it's normal at first until you see the first of the Dilophosaurs, and guess what? It's not going to be the last of them. Now, in my own canon, this is Dilophosaurus Weatherly Tigris. But let's spare the science, because this is literally a Jurassic Park game. Later, you find a whole nest full of baby Dilophosauruses. So then you come across this puddle, and... Well, you run across the puddle, but guess what? There's a wire in it. So you try to get it to shock them, and well... Shocking. Positively shocking. Then you get on the motorcycle, like Owen Grady, and guess what, that's in another level. Psych. Cause guess what? You ram through all those raptors, and... Stage 3 is called the plane. And you basically Owen Grady yourself out of there. And it's very repetitive, and like one of those Subway Surfers clones, just 
um, in a horizontal view and not a vertical view. Stage 4 is called the Glen. And in the Glen, you find the first herbivore in the entire game, which is Pachycephalosaurus. But it is abnormally undersized. And eventually, you have to swing your way out of it, because the Pachycephalosauruses want to land their heads against you. After a lot of stuff, you run away from an orange Pachy, and that's stage four. And after you're done with stage four, Alan Grant finds the Jurassic Park gates, even though it's Isla Sorna. And he also finds this red raptor. Stage five is called the museum. And once you enter the museum, the floor starts rumbling. And that is because the red raptor is really fast. You get out of the room, you shoot this raptor, and then eventually, a blue raptor shows up, which means technically, blue is in this game. And you might be wondering, what happens with Blue the Velociraptor next? Nothing. They do nothing with the Blue Raptor for the rest of this level. Which I think is a missed opportunity. The Red Raptor does come back though, and you're able to trap it by just dropping a little cage on it. It was conveniently placed in the middle of the room. After that, you go through the kitchen, and you're done. After that, you find the aviary. Stage 6 is called the Breeding Farm. This level's basically made up of a bunch of platforming, and once you get to the parachuting part, you actually get through it pretty fast. Stage 7 is called the Jungle. The Jungle is basically Chaos Incarnate. Oh, by the way, remember those blue raptors from earlier? They're literally all over the place here. Like, it's insane. Also, some Gallimimus has run in and absolutely destroy the place. And after all that stuff happens, you get on this bridge, which already has a bunch of boards to it. And you go through this little cavern, and then you're done. Stage 8 is called The Harbor. This is the final stage, and it's got some little crates on it that are kind of like Jurassic Park. They've also got the T-Rex, and remember that very janky looking Spino from earlier? Yeah, he's in that too. And guess what? That's the end of the game. And after all that, you ride into the sunrise. I will give Jurassic Park 3 Island Attack a solid A-. Not bad, kid. The next game I will be reviewing is Jurassic Park 3 The DNA Factor. And this game was also made by Konami, but this time it was made by their Honolulu office, which is quite cool because they shot Jurassic Park, or at least part of it, on the same island as Honolulu, and guess what? I went there. So the game starts out on a stormy night with a plane flying over Isla Sorna, and it's carrying 
little DNA capsules. But the funny thing is, they look exactly like mutagen capsules. So who's ripping off who? Anyways, the plane keeps flying over the place. And then, boom, lightning. So it crashes down from the sky. And guess what? A T-Rex is very atmospherically cool at that very second. Then it shows the Jurassic Park 3 logo. And then... Boom! And that's your main menu. And when you want to play the game, you have the option between Lori and Mark. Always choose Mark, because Lori gets a bunch of damage you got from it. the smallest stuff. Anyways, you are immediately shown a map of Isla Sorna. And, well, you basically have to pick up the rest of the canisters and get their DNA sequences before, like, they expire or something like that. Anyways, it shows you this screen, and they go through some exposition, but then it shows the four chemicals that make up DNA. Anyways, after that, it shows the main dangerous animals that you're gonna have to face off against, and I like how they used a female JP3 raptor. Stage 1 is called Jungle of Giants, and in Jungle of Giants, you basically just run around, kill a combi, kill another combi, get a DNA thing, and then repeat the same process. And after you're done doing all that yeah, stuff man, over on. and over again, you get the DNA capsule, and then you're done with the level. Psych, you're not, because guess what? There's a mini game, and in that mini game, well, you basically repeat whatever you would want to do in Space Invaders. Shoot the little purple things, and then the only difference is you want to shoot the little sparkly things in the sky, or in this case, the DNA sequence, and then you're done, and you'll unlock a new dinosaur. Stage 2 is called the Grasslands. So basically, this level is just like the last level, but it's basically just got a grasslands reskin, and for some reason there are pine trees, which is weird, instead of redwoods, and also there are gallimimuses. And besides those differences, that's pretty much it. Like between this level and the last one. Yeah, very cool. And then, when you're done with the level, you go into that mini game. Level 3 is called the Raptor Pets. And in this level, it's kind of strange because it's on the tour track, but there are just random buildings that come out of nowhere. And then later on, the track is completely cut off, but then it comes right back later. Oh, and also they introduce the doctors. Then, of course, when you're done with the level, you play that game. Level 3 is called the Hatchery. What's the only difference? Oh wait, you're in the Hatchery! And what are you gonna do when you're done with the level? Play the game? What? Oops, I had a bad source. Turns out, level 3 is actually a boss battle with a Mementi Saurus. And you're supposed to jump. I don't know how it stomping on the ground kills you if you don't jump, but I don't know. Stage 6 is called the Return to the Raptor Games. It's basically the same thing as the last level, except for this time it has a Triceratops that tries to also a boss battle with an abnormally slow T-Rex that you have to shock. After you defeat the T-Rex, the level's done, and you play the minigame. Level 7 is called Savage Lands, and in Savage Lands, you basically climb around, go up a tree, and then so on and so on. And then there's the occasional surprise Tyranodon. And after you're done, you play the minigame. Level 8 is called 
perilous highlands. And you know this level's going to be a good one because you can see an image of the walking with dinosaurs and Kylosaurus. This level has cliffs galore, and it also introduces the Pachycephalosaurus, which this time is at least appropriately sized. And you use the Pachycephalosaurus to bust through barriers so you can get further into the level. There are also literally ladders everywhere. The aviary entrance also shows up, and it looks almost exactly like how it looks in the film. After you go up one last ladder, you're done with the level. Level 9 is called the InGen Lab. And I can only imagine the people who were making this game going, Hey, this game needs to be more sci-fi. We need to put lasers in this game. And they did. Also, we get to see an adult, well, sub-adult, Stylophosaurus. Also, there's this massive ladder with steam that kills you somehow. I don't know. After you're done climbing the ladder, you spend the rest of the level running from rafters. And then you're done! Level 10 is called The Ancient Forest. And just like a couple levels ago, it starts off with one of the animals from Walking with Dinosaurs, except this time it's the Stegosaurus. After that, you see your first Stegosaurus, and oh my gosh, it is tiny. In my own little subcanon, a little herd of Stegosauruses were secluded in a small section of the island and became Stegosaurus Bikinis. Anyways, you fight a bunch of Stegosauruses for a while, and then you're done with the level. Level 11 is called The Return to Perilous Highlands. In this level, they introduced one new animal, which was the Ankylosaurus from Walking with Dinosaurs. Which, if you think about it, if they tried to get the rights, they could probably have made a Walking with Dinosaurs game with some of the same sprites that they had in this game. And they could definitely add some new ones, like the Tyrannosaurus. Anyways, the rest of the level is pretty much a Tyrannodon battlefield. Then at the very end of the level, a Ankylosaurus tries smashing you. Level 12 is called the Return to Savage Lands. Also, this level is the first and last time we see the Spinosaurus in the entire game. And oh my gosh, that thing is the size of a freaking kaiju. No, literally, if you converted roughly the same height of Kong from Kong Skull Island to length, you'd get the length of this creature. The Spinosaurus in this boss fight mainly uses its bite as its main attack, but closer to the end it tries sawing you down. Basically, you run from the Spinosaurus until you get to this log and then you're done. Anyways, there's a cutscene that gives you the plot rundown before the final level, and basically they're gonna bomb the island, and if you don't get to this plane right here, you're gonna die. So, basically the main point of the next level is to try to evade all of the enemies from the game um, that are smaller sized, and try not to get hit by the missiles as well. After you're done playing the final level, the final cutscene takes place. And this final cutscene takes place after the planes bomb the island. And it actually asks some of the same ethics questions that the original Jurassic Park novels asked. At the very end of the sequence, it shows a strand of DNA rotating and asking the question of whether or not we should or should not clone extinct creatures. And on that ambiguous note, the game ends. On that note, I will score this game now. From the lackluster designs to the actually quite fun gameplay, but the kind of odd minigame that plays after every single level that is only there to foreshadow future levels, I will give this game a solid B. And everything was lovely once again. The last game for today, and the rest of the season, 
will be Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder. And this game has by far the strangest intro because it starts out with a pteranodon and then it cuts straight to an unknown tyrannosaur running through the forest and then it cuts to a compi on a hill in front of a spinosaurus and the music's playing until at one point the pteranodon just cuts the music out. After you start your game and select your name, hey that rhymed, you start the game and oh my gosh, this is the most annoying music ever. Seriously, when I was editing this video, I got an actual migraine. Anyways, this game is kind of similar to the other Jurassic Park Park Builders, um, but this one's just not made as well as the other ones, and just two years after this one came out, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis came out, which is quite possibly the best Jurassic Park game ever. One good thing about this game is that it is the one Jurassic Park game to not only have over 100 dinosaurs, but literally 140 dinosaurs. So if you pause anywhere in here, you'll find a dinosaur that you weren't expecting. Mini Tyrannosaurus, anyone? What about Pachyplorosaurus? That one's a real classic. There's really not much more to say about this game other than the buildings look weird. There are too many menus. Yeah, that's basically about it. Other than the absolutely strange stuff in the advertisement menu, there's Jurassic Times, a fake news outlet. But my personal favorite is the Carnivore Cop. Just because I like to imagine how weird that ad campaign would be. You know, it's quite ironic. This game is quite terrible. It had the worst release date ever, and it has terrible music. And this game has practically no redeeming qualities. Therefore, I will give it a D-. minus. That is one big pile of shit. Thank you for tuning in this season of Jurassic Park Game Reviews, where we reviewed the good the bad, and the ugly games. Have your eyes peeled in the next three weeks for the opening episode of season two, where we will take a look into Jurassic Park The Lost World games.